Hi there and welcome to lesson four of our final biology topic B6 uh, beyond the microscope and today we're going to be looking at how microbes can uh, help produce uh, fuels known as biofuels. Anyway here are our objectives. Okay so let's have a look at our learning objectives for this lesson on biofuels. So by the end of this lesson you should understand how fuels can be produced from biological sources. Biogas is a gas that's produced by decomposing bacteria that can be found in marshes, septic tanks and in animal digestive systems. And what they do is they feed on plant and animal material and produce a mixture of gases. Now biogas contains 60% methane 40% carbon dioxide and then there are trace amounts of nitrogen, hydrogen and hydrogen sulphide. Now hydrogen sulphide is the rotten egg smell that you can probably smell um, coming from biogases or septic tanks if you've ever been near one. Now biogas can actually be a, or have a negative impact if it's produced at landfill sites. Now because at a landfill site you've got lots and lots of rubbish, you can therefore get lots and lots of this methane in the biogas being produced. Now that means that it could be potentially explosive and um, this is one of the reasons why landfill sites shouldn't be built on for years after it's been, uh, been finished with. Now biogas is not quite as uh, energy rich as normal methane however biogas that contains more than 50% methane is a very good fuel it burns easily and we get a good energy use from it however biogas with less than 10% methane is very explosive especially if some of the other gases that are in there are oxygen as it can be highly explosive now with biogas it is a much cleaner fuel than petrol or diesel. Now biogas digesters can produce biogas on a large scale. Now they work as a continuous flow system. Now what you can have uh, here is the biogas digester. Now how it works is you get the waste material can be added in uh, pretty much on a daily basis. Now it flows through into the, the main section of the digester where the conversion into the biogas is actually made. Now it goes through into here and then the gas is produced. Now because the gas will be less dense it will move towards the, the top of the biodigester or biogas digester. The rest of the, the waste will flow through and then you'll get a residual digested sludge so this is the leftovers now the gas can flow up to the top and that can be siphoned off and it can be used as and when it is needed now this stuff here this is actually a, the waste product and this can be used to uh, as a fertilizer for for crops now these are really really useful for areas of the world where there is not a mains electricity supply now what they can do here is they can use this to generate electricity in remote parts of the world. Now they can actually be used for several uses, burning for electricity, producing hot water for central heating systems and as a fuel for buses as well. Now the digester has to be kept at specific conditions. If it is too cold, you're not going to produce enough of the biogas, so you're not going to have a quicker, quicker rate of production. Now if it's above 45 degrees, once again you get that denaturing of enzymes and there is no production of the biogas at all. Now some countries uh, have very very low oil or petrol reserves so that they can't um, 
produce their own petrol or diesel. Now what these countries do have though is they have a high sugar cane reserve. Now sugar can be used, as we've seen in the previous lesson, it can be used to make ethanol which is an alcohol. Now alcohol is, is can be burnt and it can produce uh, a large amount of energy. However, it won't produce as much energy as petrol or diesel will. So it can be mixed with petrol or diesel and that can make gas a whole. So that's a mixture of petrol and alcohol. Now, some countries such as Brazil actually run on, on this fuel. They have a plentiful supply of sugar so they mix their ethanol with gas uh, with petrol to make gas a whole. Now one of the things you may be asked about in your exam is the advantages and disadvantages of the use of biofuels. Now one of the biggest impacts is obviously on the environment. Now biofuels are renewable now the term renewable means that they can be grown back or reproduced within a lifetime. Obviously once you burn a fuel it's gone. However you can regrow biofuels within a lifetime. Whereas coal and gas it will take millions of years. Now biofuels are supposed to be cleaner than fossil fuels. They produce much less air pollution. There are no particulates that are formed, such as um, carbon monoxide or the carbon soot that can be produced from uh, burning petrol and diesel or coal, gas and oil. However, carbon dioxide is produced. Now, carbon dioxide is obviously one of the factors that may contribute to global warming. However, the carbon dioxide that's produced from burning the fuel is actually taken back in by the plants that are regrown. So the carbon dioxide that goes into the atmosphere is taken back in by the plant. And that's one of the things that makes it carbon neutral. So it's been uh, taken back in at the same rate that it's being produced. Now other issues that may come from uh, producing biofuels is the land that's cleared is not already covered in vegetation. Uh, the second thing is that in some places large areas of land can result in habitat destruction. Hello, I'm Mr Wood and I changed. Now we've looked today at biofuels and how biofuels are produced by microbes. They can be produced in a variety of places such as landfill sites. Uh, we've also looked at how gas a whole and biogases are produced in digestion digesters. I'm just kidding, that was actually me. I don't know whether you noticed. I was just hiding behind him. Anyway, we have looked at all of those things and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.